is a presentation of KSL Sports. Hello, Cougar Nation. Who's open for three? Angle left, takes it, and makes it. Fuseni Traore. And listen to the Cougar Nation. Every Monday night, we break down the last week of BYU basketball and look ahead to the Cougars' prospects for the postseason. Cougar Nation. Here's BYU insider Mitch Harper and Matt Biamonte on Utah's legacy home of the Cougars. KSL News Radio. Cougar Nation, welcome into the show today. Matt Biamonte and Mitch Harper. BYU basketball knows where they're going. It's not Salt Lake City in the opening round, which is unfortunate. They're heading to Omaha as a six seed. We'll be breaking that one down as we look forward to this week. March Madness is here, Mitch. We have arrived, and BYU is in the field. It's a special time, Matt, and BYU basketball should be excited at the moment because – you know, getting to the NCAA tournament is hard to do. It's a field of 68, and even though you're in the Big 12 Conference, getting into this bracket is difficult. So for BYU to be in this spot and be here, it's a special moment. It's one worth celebrating, but now they got the chance and the task to actually win and, and do some create some damage in this bracket. And, and I think, you know, there's a path here for BYU to do that. We want to hear from you, Cougar Nation. Because this is your show. This is the, the moment you've been waiting for all BYU basketball season is to be in the NCAA tournament. Give us a call, 801-575-8255. If you want to sound off on the on the seed, on the Sunday play, the no Sunday play, the path to the Sweet 16, uh, call in, 801-575-8255. And we're curious, how confident are you that this BYU team can make the Sweet 16? Let's dive into our takeaways. Cougar Nation takeaways. Mitch and Matt analyze BYU's last week of play and what it means for the next week. All right, a lot of thoughts, a lot of takeaways from Selection Sunday yesterday, Mitch. I was it was a beautiful Sunday <laughs> afternoon. I was driving to a park with my kids. My wife is watching on the phone, and we're going through the East Bracket. UConn, the number one seed. You're like, okay, there's no way BYU is getting in this bracket. She's like, BYU. I'm like, where? What, 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 are, what are you talking about? She, there are six. I'm like, I, I was speechless. I could not believe it. And it was clear, uh, I think one of the biggest takeaways, Mitch, from Selection Sunday, Sunday play, BYU not playing on Sunday, it definitely hurt BYU when it came to their seed in this year's tournament. It definitely did. And, you know, the, BYU is one of the, the trickiest programs to put in the bracket. And I know you're probably thinking, what makes it so tricky? You know, but it, it it's trickier than ever because – well, it's always been you only have half the bracket available to you because you're not available to play on the Friday-Sunday regionals. But then also now you have the dynamic of you're in the toughest league in America that pumps out eight bids to the big dance, and you're trying to avoid round of 32 rematches, and you go, where do you place BYU in this field? It's tricky, and it's, you know, it's a self-inflicted deal. It's just frustrating because you did think that by being in the Big 12, the NCAA tournament will make it work. Because BYU was the 17th overall team, the highest rated five seed in the field, yet they get a six. And that's a pretty big fall. It's one thing if you're the lowest rated five. Right. But you're the highest rated five seed and you get a six. And I think that's where it's a little bit discouraging. And you look, people will say... The seed doesn't matter. It's about the matchup. And we'll dive into that matchup with Duquesne coming up here a little bit later this show. But six seeds show that you don't get to the Final Four. There hasn't been a six seed reach the Final Four in 32 years. You're almost as likely to go to the Final Four as an 11 seed as you are a six seed. So it's a tougher path than, say, the five seed where two five seeds last year reached the Final Four. And the thing that bothered me, too, is Gonzaga gets bumped up into that five-seed spot. Right. And, and here's of the course, thing. Gonzaga. <laughs> I know, you just can't get away from Gonzaga. What I don't understand is they get bumped down because they don't want to have a rematch with Kansas. Kansas will be playing in Salt Lake City as a four-seed. And it funnels into the Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Midwest region. Fair, but move Kansas around. Yeah. They have no restrictions. They could have played in any of the spots that the four-seeds were playing in, and yet it's BYU that takes the punishment because of the Sunday play. And th that was unfortunate, but it does lead to takeaway number two. They've got a favorable opening matchup, and it's not a terribly difficult path to the Sweet 16, Mitch. It's not. You're going to open up on Thursday morning. It's You're going to hear the call right here on KSL News Radio, only on 
over the air, by the way, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. BYU versus Duquesne, 1040 AM tip, Mountain Time. It'll take place in Omaha, Nebraska. The arena that they'll play in is home to the Creighton Blue Jays. But, you know, Duquesne is coming from the A-10. They're the A-10 tournament champions. They won their conference tournament. They're playing good ball right now. It's kind of a classic East versus West sort of style where, you know, out West we typically are known for our high-flying offenses and up-tempo attacks, whereas Duquesne, they kind of want to muck it up and defensively get after it on the defensive end. Top 30 adjusted defensive efficiency metrics this season. So Duquesne's a a, a good team, but this is one that BYU – is going to be the favorite, and they should be because they're the better team. Like, if this was a game played in December, no one's batting an eye about BYU and Duquesne tipping off, but because it's March Madness, it it gets a little more tension because anything can happen in this month. And if you want to watch it, too, it'll be on True TV. Mitch has a great breakdown on KSLSports.com of all the little tidbits and things you need to know so you don't miss a, a second of the BYU Cougars in the NCAA tournament. Another takeaway, look, there's, we might be getting too ahead of ourselves here, but if they win that opening round, there's a potential round of 32 against Illinois. That's a team that just won the Big Ten championship. But And, and they, they've got some really good guard play. They've got some outstanding scores of the basketball. But Illinois, to me, doesn't scream unbeatable. Like right. I think that's a winnable game. If you win that one, and again, a lot of ifs here at play. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves a Sweet 16 rematch against Iowa State. What do you think of that path forward where the Cyclones could be meeting you in the round of 16? I love it. I I think this is a great draw for BYU. And I understand the frustration about not playing in Salt Lake because I'm telling you, if BYU had got in Salt Lake, they're getting the Sweet 16. For sure. BYU fans, Cougar Nation listening. Would that have... opening round, though, for Gonzaga is tough. Oh, yeah. M- McNeese State, Will Wade, he Schroyer's the AD there. That is a 30-plus win team. I don't care who you are, what league you're in. You win 30-plus games, you are a good team. dang good team. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm okay avoiding McNeese State, but at the same time, I just think that being in Salt Lake, you would have the I, home I, I, court I feel, advantage. I feel confident they're getting yeah. Sweet 16. But, uh, you know, you're right. I mean, Illinois, they haven't been to the Sweet 16 since 2005. You know, BYU's had a more recent Sweet 16 appearance than the fight in Illini. They might be tense in that spot if they meet in the round of 32. So it's what, Darren Williams? Darren Williams, D. Brown, former Jasmine, were lining <laughs> it up for for the fight in Illini. So, yeah, I, I like the draw for BYU, and I think there's a good path to make it a run. I mean, if BYU plays their best basketball, Matt, BYU can get to the Elite Eight and face off against UConn. I, I believe in that. I do. This, this BYU team is good. I mean, you're the 17th overall team in the bracket, and this was Mark Pope on being proud of, of being that top five seed. The NCAA section put, committee put out their one through 68 list, and we were 17, so we were the number one five. And so I'm super proud of that. That's a really incredible accomplishment for our guys. And, you know, the seeding worked how it did after that. And um, like I said, every single team you play in this NCAA tournament is going to be great. So we're just excited to have a chance to go play. And that's a great point by Mark Pope is that even though the name Duquesne doesn't register much of a feeling for folks out here in Salt Lake and in Provo, but, you know, they won a tournament. They've, they're coming in with an eight-game win streak. They haven't lost since since February. I mean, this is a team that's that's on a roll right now, so it's going to be a tough out. It's going to need a complete 40 minutes for BYU to get this win. Let's get your phone calls, 801-575-8255. We'll get to the phone lines coming up after the break. Weigh in on our question, how confident are you that BYU can reach the Sweet 16 or any just general thoughts you have about this BYU team and its draw in the NCAA tournaments? Cougar Nation, Mitch Harper, Matt Biamonte coming to you live from Provo today. We just got done with BYU football practice, but we're talking Cougar hoops as it's March Madness. We're taking the break. We'll talk more Cougar hoops on the other side.